y'all, Brandy here. So it is Monday, and you know what that means. Uh, today, I'm in a collaboration with Kim over at Kim's Happy Place. Hey, girl. <laughs> and uh, I recently started a paranormal series, and Kim is a fan of it. And I really appreciate the fact that she watches every Friday. Uh, her and Miss Jackie Russell. Miss Jackie, thank you so much. They've been supporters of this series since day one, and thank you. It means a lot. You know, when you do new segments and new things, you never know how well they're going to go over. So I really appreciate you guys for helping to make that a success, and you have, and uh, it's doing great, and that, which is wonderful because I love it. Um, but today is Mask Monday, so happy Mask Monday. And Kim and I decided that we would do a collab and we would tell some of our spooky stories. Our, well, our experiences, actually. They're not stories. And uh, do our face masks. And what would be better than a snail essence face mask? <laughs> I know Kim has done a couple of these. I have not. Isn't that cute? Oh, look at that. That is absolutely adorable. And this one is the Dewey Tree Help Mask Snail Vitalizing uh, Sheet Mask for Skin Lacking Elasticity. Check that out. <laughs> I could definitely use that. And Kim sent these over. We're actually going to be having a giveaway of a couple of sheet masks at the end of this video. And uh, Kim was kind enough not to only send one for myself, but one for you, the winner, also. So you'll get to try the same one that we're using. Um, I'm really bad at putting masks on on camera, so I'm going to run and put this on right quick, and I'll be right back. Okay, y'all, I'm back. Uh, how do I look? I'll tell you what, this thing feels really nice, and it smells really good, really good. Um, and the essence on there, I'm telling you. Now I look like uh, Jason Voorhees. That's fitting, huh? <laughs> Anywho, I'm cooking, so if you see any explosions in the background, we'll pause it and we'll come back. Um, so, yeah, uh, it, this is a collaboration. We're going to tell a couple of our paranormal experiences, um, or one. Uh, I am a big believer in the paranormal, as a lot of you may already know, uh, primarily because I've experienced it for myself. Um, when I was in high school, we actually moved into our first haunted house. And I say first because I do believe uh, we have something here in this one also. Um, nothing bad, of course. Okay, I thought my pot was going to blow. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, you guys. Nothing bad, of course, in this one. Um, there was really... <sighs> I'm not going to say nothing bad in the other one. When I was in high school, I believe I had just come out of 8th grade. I was going into ninth, And we moved into this house that was at this dead-end part of the street. The house was really old. And it was one of those that the front was level with the ground. But in the back, it kind of was uneven and kind of built down. Um, it had a back door on the bottom part, which, you know, it was kind of two-story in the back. When you open that door, everything under there was just dirt, like a dirt floor, and there was a hearth um, underneath there that, of course, you know, went, it was connected to nothing, but it was there. Um, there were a lot of older type things in this home. We had an ironing board that was built into the wall. It had a little cabinet door. Um, we had a very old, outside of my bedroom window was like a very old thermometer um, that was attached to the wall outside. The entire property was surrounded by these rock walls that were put together. You know, it's almost like the brown, kind of reddish iron looking rock. Um, and they were pillared off and the mortar was white. There was a stream that ran down by it, uh, by the property, and a little, and of course it was down a hill. And also behind the house, there was a gazebo that was made of that same rock. And uh, we used to go play down there and everything. They've torn the house down now. It's a parking lot. But um, during that time, 
when my first experience in the house, my friend and I went to look at it because we knew that we were moving there, we were renting. And uh, there was a screened in front porch and um, uh, like a, I guess like a French door type of situation for the front door. It was a single door, but it had the little panes of glass all over it. And I thought that the, it had a white sheer curtain that was up. And my friend said, Brandy, did you just see that lady in the house? And I said, no, because I hadn't. I was like, that's a curtain, you know? And she's like, no, Brandy, there was a lady. And I said, okay, you know, you're pulling my leg. <laughs> well, let's go. Um, I, I didn't really believe in that sort of thing at the time. Um, but I was kind of a strange kid. You know, my favorite fairy tales were Hansel and Gretel, where the witch is going to eat you. And Little Red Riding Hood with the Big Bad Wolf. You know, I was just an odd one of those. Um, and so, I always enjoyed it, but I never actually believed in that sort of thing. Uh, so, we'll, we'll speed it up. You never felt quite comfortable in the house. I never did. Um, I did hear like a very quiet voice kind of say my name. It wasn't like a whisper in my ear. It was more of like an echo throughout the entire house. This house had an attic fan. Um, an attic fan is this big fan that's built into the ceiling and it has a, like a door in the ceiling that you can open and when you open all the windows it draws air in. This one still worked so we did use it on occasion. When I would be lying in my bedroom at night, I would hear footsteps, and it just they just went around my bedroom ceiling area. It's not like they went anywhere else around the roof of the house. It was just right over my bedroom, and it would start off very slowly, and it would get faster and faster and faster, and I always hated it when Mom would raise the attic fan because this thing would speed up, and then I would hear it, and the attic fan's right in front of my bedroom, then I would hear this whatever it was just like jump down from the attic fan to the hall floor um, directly in front of my door, but there was nothing ever there. Uh, another time, um, I was babysitting my niece, and she was maybe two. I was giving her a bath, and uh, all of a sudden... She looks at something that's behind me, and she points, and she just starts screaming and crying at the top of her lungs. And uh, I just got the oddest feeling, and it scared me so bad. Nobody else was home. It was almost like this feeling of dread. It was an instant fear. And I scooped her up, wrapped her in a towel, and we sat out on the front porch in a rocking chair for probably an hour and a half until my mom and dad got home because I was not going back in this house. Um, and then there was also my brother and I, we were up really late one night. Um, this is back when the, the cable would go off and it would play the national anthem and then you would see either the snow or like the different colored bars on the TV. But my brother and I had stayed up watching, um, watching TV until that point. Now, going into our hall, we had the same style front, or the same style door on the hallway as we did on the front. It was, you know, the white door with the crystal um, doorknob, and it had the little panes of glass all over it. And uh, it was opened, and this woman okay <laughs> this woman peeks out like this from the hall door to look at my brother and I you know we're sitting on this side of the living room on the couch that means that our the hall door would be here she's peering out to look at us and she had on a white I don't know what gown or something it was a white thing and she had long dark hair and my mother has red hair, but it's a dark red. And so in the dark, it could appear like a chestnut or a dark color. And I, my mom had a white nightgown. And I remember I said, Mom, and my brother saw her too. And when I, caught, when I said, Mom, she ducked back in, into the wall. Uh, there was no doorway. There was no bedroom there. It was the wall. She, she had come out of the wall and she ducked back in. 
Um, I, I couldn't believe it, so I walked down the hallway to my mom and dad's room. That It was at the end of the hall, and uh, they were sound asleep. It wasn't my mother. Um, it, I, it didn't feel bad. It just, it was startling, okay? Um, then, one of the next things that happened was, I didn't experience this, but my mother did, which is hilarious because she is such a, a practical person. Um, she woke up one night and she couldn't move. She could only blink her eyes, almost like a sleep paralysis kind of thing, which it could have very well been sleep paralysis, but she was paralyzed. She couldn't move, she couldn't speak, you know, nothing like that, which of course is scary. And she just had a horrible feeling. It was like a doom feeling uh, of dread and fear. Um, she said that she started saying the Lord's Prayer in her head because she couldn't say it out loud. She couldn't move her mouth. Um, and then she said that the feeling slowly lifted, but this went on for about a minute and a half. It wasn't just a couple of seconds. Uh, she turned to my father when she could finally move again, and she told him, you know, turn the light on, turn the light on. And my dad, the lamp by the bed, and my dad, who was sound asleep, uh, tells my mother in his sleep, no, because if I turn the light on, they'll see us. And, uh, of course, my mom was like, oh, I don't think so, you know. And so she, dive, she dives over and she hits the lamp. And uh, it, it affected her so badly that she actually, you know, the first thing she did was she went and, and checked on us kids. And then she was up for the rest of the night and until the daylight. And she said it was just the, the worst feeling that she's ever felt in her life. Um, my little brother also in that home, in this one bedroom, the same bedroom that my mother uh, had this experience in, my brother shared it before my parents moved into it. And um, my little brother, my baby brother, would wake up with these night terrors where he's just screaming and crying. And, you know, my father would have to take him to the, the bathroom and kind of dampen his face and wake him up enough to take him back to bed. And then he was calm. Um, but when my mother switched rooms with them is when she had the experience and then my little brother never had the night terror things again. Um, the, one of the last things I'm going to go ahead and say, because I don't want the video to get too long, is, uh, there was this one time, well, when we finally moved out of the house, my mom and I never talked about it. You know, I told her in the house, I was like, this house is haunted, Mom. And she's like, Brandy, you know, stop it. You're being ridiculous. And when I would tell her the things that I was experiencing, it was the same thing. It was, you know, just stop being ridiculous. There are normal explanations for everything. Stop being silly. Well, we moved out of that house, and we were in our new house. And we had probably been in the new house for about a year or so. And I can't remember how it came up. I don't think she can either, but um, it, it did. And we talked about, I think I asked her, Mom, did you ever see the, see the lady in the house? And we described her at exactly the same time. Because it turns out that my mother, uh, who never told me this, she was like, you know what? I did, Brandy, and she and I never told her for whatever reason. I never told her about seeing the lady in the hallway. I don't know why you think I would, but I never did. Uh, I told her about the name calling, and I uh, I think I told her about what happened with my niece. But you know, the biggest thing, seeing this apparition, I, I didn't think to tell her. Um, but she said, you know, I did. She said, I was walking to the kitchen to get a drink, and there was a woman that was standing in the middle of the kitchen. And then I was like, okay, wait, wait, wait. We described her at the same time, and it was the woman in white with the long, dark hair. And she said the same thing that I did, that she didn't get a scary feeling from this woman. But she said that the experience that she had had in the room that night, the, the paralysis thing, she said she just knew that that was a man. The energy just felt aggressive and masculine. And, uh, you know, yeah. 
So that was kind of cool because, like I said, we never knew that we saw the woman. And uh, when you don't talk about it beforehand, but you describe them the, exactly the same way at the exact same time, that's kind of cool. So that's it. Um, that's our collab. It's been 15 minutes, and I'm going to remove my mask. I don't know if this is one that we have to rinse or not. Um, this one says... Nope, you just pat it in. I like those. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, like I said, this is a giveaway video. I hope that you guys enjoyed the stories. I have plenty more where those came from, but like I said, I don't want the video to be too long. So, we are going to be doing a giveaway. You're going to get a couple of face masks, maybe four or five different masks. This will be one of them. Um, the giveaway rules are the same as they always are. I'm not responsible for any kind of allergic reaction that you have, so do a skin test prior. You must be 18 years or older to participate in the giveaway. You must live in the continental United States. YouTube has nothing to do with the giveaway. Um, all products, all masks, except for this one, <laughs> are provided by myself and, uh, Kim. And, uh... You need to, when the announcement has been made, I think I'm going to run it for two weeks. I don't know what Kim says. If I'm wrong, I'll, I'll correct it down in the description box, maybe just for one, but I'll let you guys know. Um, and uh, once the winner has been announced, you have 48 hours to contact me via my email address or my Instagram. Um, you'll find it in an older video or what have you, but I'll do it in a post, uh, a community post, so you guys will, you know, be notified that way. And I think that's it. I'm not, I'm not responsible if it's lost, damaged, or stolen. I can't replace them. And all of the other giveaway rules will be in the description box down below to be a little bit more clear. Um, and I guess that's it, you guys. I enjoyed it. Kim, thank you so much for doing the collab with me. And thank you so much for the face masks. Um, I've got to show her friend mail. She sent me the Where the Crawdads Sing DVD with a beautiful card and some really awesome stickers, you guys. So, uh, I need to show you guys that um, before too long. But, that's going to do it for today. Uh, the secret word that I want you guys to use is... Um, I don't know. Ghost. Use the word ghost in a sentence down below. Uh, we'll do it the random YouTube picker way. So, alrighty. Uh, I appreciate, appreciate you guys for watching. Please go check out Kim's channel over at Kim's Happy Place. She will be linked also. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye, y'all.